Hello, my old school soul food family. Chef Jeff is back with another video. All right, y'all done had your all Give it gravy and dressing and stuff. We just get into the bread, y'all. I know y'all, a lot of y'all don't like baking, but I'm going to put y'all to work. I'm going to show y'all a simple recipe. You see by the title of the, of the recipe, some buttery crescent rolls. This recipe is very simple. The longest thing it takes is the letting the dough rise and all that. It's very simple to make and very simple to put together. But then, like I said, the only part is letting, waiting for everything to rise. Another important thing about this video, about this uh, recipe, when you're making rolls, especially crescent rolls, everything needs to be room temperature. The milk, the water, the eggs, the butter, everything. Because if it's not, it's not going to rise properly. It's going. If it does, it's going to take longer. Yeast needs warmth and sugar to rise. That's what makes yeast, yeast activate. Sugar and warmth. So it's very important that your items of room temperature uh, are warm to work. So let me get started because I don't want my stuff to cool off while I'm talking here. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bloom this uh, yeast. Meaning bloom, meaning I want to bring it to life. So what I'm going to do, put the yeast in the, in the, uh, in here, right here in the, uh, mixer. A little sugar, like I say, sugar, activate the yeast. A little water. We're going to stir this around here. I think we'll just take the mixer here. Kind of stir it around there. Just a second here. Stir it around there a little. And we're gonna let that, that's gonna foam up here in about five minutes. That's gonna foam up. And that's meaning the yeast is activating. So if that doesn't foam up, your yeast doesn't foam up, that means the yeast is already there. Sometimes you'll get some bad yeast in the store. So that'll show you right there. That's why I like to do this step to kind of give me an idea if my yeast doesn't foam up. That means it's not even alive and it's just no use for it. So that's a good uh, tip for y'all when y'all baking. Do this first. You don't want to go through all this bread making and all this work and you find out your yeast is not no good and you done did all this work for nothing. So anyway, we're going to step off by five minutes going to come back and we're going to put this bread dough together, this crescent dough together. It's very simple, y'all. Like I say, the only thing that takes a long time is uh, waiting for the yeast to rise. Because it's got to rise 45 minutes initially in the bowl. Then when I roll them all out and put them on the pan, it's got to rise another 30 minutes. So it's about an hour, what is that? An hour and 15 minutes of uh, just sitting around doing nothing time. But other than that, it's an easy recipe. Don't be intimidated by making bread. I love making bread. I used to do that every Saturday morning. Get up and make a bread dough or something. Just let it rise, and it, it's a, nothing like fresh bread in your, in your, in your, uh, in your uh, kitchen. So anyway, we'll be right back, y'all. All right, y'all. Now y'all see how this has come up to like a foaming. See this? Kind of foamed up. That means this piece is very active, y'all. I mean, it's gonna be good to go. So now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna still keep the paddle on him. I'm not gonna use a dough hook yet. The reason is, I wanna incorporate all this eggs, butter, rest of this sugar and milk, and half the flour. I wanna incorporate it really, really good. And the dough hook seems, tends to not really incorporate stuff like I want it. So I use the paddle to get the process started until I get everything combined, then I put the dough hook on there to really, really, for 15 minutes to really create the gluten, which is causes your bread structure is gluten. Whatever, you hear me talk about gluten in cakes. This is where you want to create as much gluten as you can in this type uh, of a, a recipe. So let me add the, add the uh, butter to this. Let me get my spatula here, y'all. And, and this butt is room temperature. Y'all know I'm keen on room temperature, ain't it? Y'all should be used to me by now with that. The room temperature butter in here. Rest of the sugar. Eggs. Milk. 
I'm about to say this guy's crazy. It's not easy to see us, y'all. Rest of the flour. Let me, let me mix this up a little. Put the flour and put about half the flour. A couple of cups. It calls for four cups, but don't don't put that in signs. Four cups, y'all. Because it might need a little bit more at the end of the recipe. But what I want to do, I want to get this all mixed up really good. And then I'll get my dough hook on here. Let me scrape this down. Of course, it's gonna be sticky for a long time, so don't y'all, don't y'all fret. Definitely gonna be sticky. I'm gonna get that all cooked incorporated, y'all. And I like to use room temperature butter because, see, that's what you want, a nice silky batter right now for this. I'm gonna scrape all this off. Now, we're going to go to our dough hook. And like I tell everybody, when you're making bread, I never suggest you do this by hand unless you use some Hercules or have some crazy stamina. Because this, this will wear you down. So you need to knead this for 15 minutes, y'all. And I like to do maybe a half a cup at a time until it get really incorporated. I'm gonna wait till it get to the, you know, the last cup of flour here, and then we'll uh, step off and come back. Cause it's gonna take about 15 minutes of kneading. kitchen. Look at that, y'all. Okay, now we're going to let this go for about 15 minutes. I'm going to come back and see if I need to add some more flour. So I'm going to let this knead for 15 minutes. We'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back here. See how this dough is coming apart, coming apart from the bowl? This is what you want right here. Okay. We lift this up. And this is what you want, y'all. Get that off of there. I got a bowl here that's greased already. What you do, this should just come right out of there. I'm gonna form it in a ball the best I can. There we go, make sure you form it nicely in the ball. This is the kind of dough you want, y'all. That's the consistency you want. Put it in the bowl. Now, here's the next step. Get this over here, y'all. This thing, I, I never have to lock my mixer that much, but I have to lock it when it's bread dough because the mixer want to do its own thing. Okay, now I put in a grease bowl. And all I'm going to do, y'all, I'm going to get a clean towel here that I got over here. I call these my bread tiles. And I'm going to just throw this towel right up on top of that and put it right on top of the oven. Now I go through this every time I make bread. Go put it in the oven, put it on top of the oven. And I put my oven on by 400 degrees. Especially in the winter time or the fall. In the summer, I really don't have to do it because it's more warm outside. But definitely, uh, uh, in the winter time, it's not as warm in my home. 
So I set the, uh, uh, the stove on, give it a little bit more warmth. But for 45 minutes, this thing needs to double in size. You see how it look right now? See that? This needs to double in size. See that? Okay. So we're going to set this up here. We'll set our timer. And uh, we'll come back in 45 minutes. And then we'll do the next step. Like I say, y'all, these old school crescent rolls, it looks intimidating, but it's not making bread. So we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we back. Let me show you what happened here. Voila. See how the, uh, the dough has doubled? Well, I got some good yeast, number one. And it's doubled in size. So all I'm gonna do now, just kinda tap it down here. And I'm gonna put some flour on my, on my counter here. So we about to roll this thing out. Roll it down here on the counter. Then I'm gonna cut it in two pieces. Let me get my let me get my uh, pastry cutter here. Just cut it in half there. Two pieces. Roll it in a ball here. Let the other one sit back. Sit, sit on the side. We're gonna take this one here. And we're gonna roll it out in a circle. Flour on it right here. Like I said, y'all, I love, absolutely love making bread. Love it. Okay, we're just gonna roll it out in a circle. Move this out the way here where I can get a little room here. Maybe a quarter of an inch, y'all. Get as much of a circle as you can. Have to be that perfect. But you want to be a circle though. As much as possible. Hold on in just a second, y'all. I gotta get this circle right here. Gotta get this circle perfect, huh? No such thing as a perfect circle. Okay, now. Now what I'm gonna do here. Cut it in half. I'm going to cut it in thirds here. Thirds here. 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 And here. What I'm trying to get is 12 pieces. Did I get it? Two, four, six. 12. 2, 4, 6, 2, 4, <laughs> close enough, huh? Okay, now, what I want to do here, I want to take the dough, you know a little crescent roll like you get it in the uh, store? You're just going to roll them up just like this, y'all, and we're going to put it on the pan here. Like I say, this don't have to be perfect. We're not perfect people, are we? Gonna roll it up just like this. Get the other one here. It's be more rustic anyway, y'all. This is not perfect, right? I'm gonna show you here on the pan how I got it in just a second. Get this one here. Next one I'll get <laughs> I'll get perfect on the next one, y'all. Here, roll it up on here. And this dough is so oh man, these things are gonna be so buttery. You can I can just tell by the dough right now how buttery and, and nice and buttery they're gonna be. One more here. Okay. All right, y'all. Now, I got them on the pan here. They different sizes. I'll make the other one better, y'all. They different sizes here. Now, I'm gonna make. I do the other one. I'm gonna roll out the other one here in just a second. See how easy that is. 
So, so easy. I'm gonna set that on top of the stove and I'm gonna get the other one rolled out. Got one more to roll out here. If I just keep y'all here with me. This is not too boring. Let's see if I can get this one better here. It makes me nervous being on TV doing this. on there. And this is not a sticky dough either, so it helps a lot. Let's see here. Some doughs are sticky and hard to roll, but this is this crescent dough is not. The thing is y'all when you roll it out you want to make sure you let it come back to its natural shape because if you don't when you cut it, it's going to shrink on you. Like I say, you don't have to be perfect with this. Like I say, I'm not a... Okay, now. It should come back in its shape. I'm trying to get as round as I can. Now. Okay, let's try this again. Let me get my, put some flour on my cutter here. Cut it in half. Cut it in half this way. Cut it in half again this way. Cut it in half again this way. Now you literally can make them that big if you wanted to, but I prefer not to. I like mine small here. How many we got? Three, six, three, six. <laughs> Make this one right here. Cut that one in half. All right, now let's get these on the pan here. My pan right here. I'll roll it out. Like I say, y'all, these things do not have to be perfect. You actually can make these with your kids, and they will love to do these. And I have these every Christmas in my house. So I decided, okay, I'll just put it out there for, for Thanksgiving. Put it on Thanksgiving uh, menu. I'm telling y'all, this dough is so... And you could be creative with this. You could put some... You can actually could make... You can actually use this to make cinnamon rolls with if you want to it's that type of uh type of a dough make sure they hold it up here there's gonna be some little bitty ones here one biters y'all i guess i could have made them bigger but hey it is what it is This one up. Got a couple of more here, y'all, and we'll be. I can be through boring, boring y'all with this rolling up this dough here. One more. And they're supposed to make 24. The recipe is supposed to make 24. We're going to count them here, y'all, in just a second. Let's see how many we got here. Let's put it here. See how many we got. See how many we have here. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 26. I got two, two extra. This recipe makes 24. If you actually roll them out perfectly, but like I say, who's perfect here? We just rustic here and we just old school. We're going to do it like we do it. So I'm going to do, I'm going to set them back on the stove. 30 minutes and uh, let them come back up to a different. Let me show y'all here how I got them. See, I'm gonna put them right there and I'm gonna cover them back up with a towel. Get my towel again and cover them back up. And then uh, we're gonna come back and then we're gonna put them in the oven, bake them by 15 minutes. Brush them with, I'm gonna brush them with a little honey, honey butter. It's gonna be making them even more buttery, honey buttery. And then we're going to have some awesome buttery croissants. 
Crescent Road. So we'll be right back, y'all. Okay, y'all, we are back here. And voila, look what we got here. Look what we got here. Let me move them over here to the beginning. Let me move y'all around here. See what we got. See how they puffed up all nicely right there. And look, I told y'all I'm going to do some honey butter on top when they come out the oven. I'm going to put this in the microwave about 30 seconds while they cooking. And we're going to have some, I'm going to brush it with honey butter when they come out the oven. See how beautiful those are? But they're going to be even more beautiful after I take them out of the oven. So we're going to put them in the oven about 12 to 15 minutes on 350 degrees. Let them rise up, be nice and fluffy. And uh, I like to put them in. You don't have to put them close together if you want to. I like mine close together because I, I don't like the crispy edge. I like the doughy, the, you know, the soft edges on my crescents. So, anyway, I'll explain a lot of stuff how to make these flawless after they come out of the oven. Because I don't want to wait. I want to get them in the oven and then we can talk later. So, I'm going to put them in the oven. Put this, uh, this here little honey. I got honey and some butter here. I'm going to melt it together. That's what I'm going to brush on top. And then we'll come back and we'll... You don't see how many I can eat. I need about six of these things. But y'all don't tell nobody. We'll be right back. Okay, y'all, we are back. These things are ready. Now, like I was telling y'all, I'm going to brush them with this little honey butter. Put that on there. See that? Look at that, y'all. Look at this. It's going to have that little sweetness. Ain't go wrong with this, huh? This will make it Thanksgiving. This will definitely make your Thanksgiving uh, day. People be talking about this for generations, your crescent rolls that you made. Look at that. Look at that. Don't that look awesome, yummy? How I many think you can eat of those? I think I can eat about four of them right now. I think I can eat four. So I'm going to step off here, y'all. I've got to do my thumbnail. I know i got to do the thumbnail here. And I'm going to come back. And we're going to try these out. Like I said, these things are buttery, honey, and just all kind of goodness. Anyway, we'll be right back, y'all. All right, y'all. We are back. Now, what would it be like, y'all, you put this on your Thanksgiving table? Look at that. See that? Put that on your Thanksgiving table for your family, friends, relatives, whoever you got coming over. Awesome. And it's very easy, like I was telling y'all, it's very easy. Let me try one because I can't resist. Let me try one here, a little small one. Look at that. Look how flaky that is. Let me put it up here where y'all see how flaky that is. And it's pillowy soft. Mmm. That's just like a pillow. See that? Like a pillow. Soft. So, simple, simple, simple. Hold on, let me get this down. Mm. Wow. Nothing like fresh yeast bread, y'all. It's not. But what I was going to tell y'all, a couple of things help y'all out. To make these exactly like I have and come out nice and fluffy and pillowy, make sure your milk and your water is 110 to 120 degrees. You don't want it too hot. If you get it too hot, you're going to kill the yeast. If you get it too cold, the yeast is not going to activate. It's very important that all your ingredients are at least room temperature. Your butter must be room temperature. Your eggs must be room temperature. It's very important for your dough to, it's all important with the yeast. Do not put salt directly in contact with yeast. You will kill it. You will kill it dead. That's why the shit, yeast activates and lives off sugar. That's why you see me put sugar in there, a little sugar in there with the warm water. It runs off sugar and warmth. That's why you see me put sugar and warm water in there to get that yeast, get it kick started. And also to let me know if the yeast is alive or dead. Because you, like I say, you don't want to make a big batch of dough and then you find out the yeast is dead. You're defeating your purpose. You're feeding all that work and for nothing. 
to bake a, a bread and put it on the stove to proof and doesn't proof and the yeast is dead. So that's why you try to test your yeast before you put anything else. That's something I learned in the cooking industry of cooking baking breads. Well, I've had some yeast that have been in the store too long. Even though expiration dates say one thing, the yeast had a mind of its own and it didn't work. So I realized I need to test the yeast ahead of time to make sure that my yeast is. Most time, 95% of the time, I say 90% of the time, you buy yeast in the store, it's going to work. But you'll get them sometime, it just doesn't work. I've done it. I've been through that. Also, this is a crescent roll. It's not a croissant. Croissant is made different, which is a longer process. Croissant is more of a flakier, lighter type bread, which create, you have to fold over and create layers with butter and all that. Croissants is a more time-consuming uh, bread to make. This is a crescent roll. You can make like pigs in a blanket with this. You can actually make cinnamon rolls with this if you add a little bit more sugar to the dough and then put your uh, butter and, and uh, brown sugar and raisin all that in and roll it up and cut it. You can actually make um, uh, cinnamon rolls with that. Another thing with this bread, if you want to make it ahead of time, you can. You can go all the way to the, to the method where I uh, roll the dough out and form them. Stop at that point. You can either freeze them, put them in the pan like that. Uh, if you got a reason to freeze them, freeze them like that. Then take them off the pan and then put them in the bag. Don't just pile them in the back like that because they're going to stick together. Make sure they're frozen individually. Then take them out and put them in a Ziploc bag or a food safe or however you got it. And uh, you can throw them out on the day before. Thanksgiving, they let them thaw out and proof. They can proof in your fridge, or you can put them on the pan the night before in your fridge, in your fridge, and pull them out. Just form them on the pan, or, or, and put them in your fridge. And Thanksgiving morning, just put them on the counter about 30, 45 minutes. Probably be 45 minutes to an hour when you take them straight out of the refrigerator. Let them proof up. Put them in the oven. You can do this ahead of time. It's not something you can do on Thanksgiving Day. Do it ahead of time. These, actually, these here, I'm going to take them and freeze them. I'm going to freeze them in a food saver very carefully. And all I got to do is just warm them back up. I just cover them up and warm them back up. That's what I'm going to do with these. So my bread is ready, already ready. I'm just warm them back up in the oven, cover it up in the, in the and wrap them up and, and warm them up very, very slowly. But, yeah, it's a little something, y'all, to make it hollow, Halloween. Oh, my God. Thanksgiving and even Christmas a little bit. That's why I'm putting these videos out early. To educate people, make your life easier. Like I say, I can Christmas Thanksgiving is great, but Christmas is what I do about like I say, I do at least forty items. I didn't do it last year because of the pandemic. But like forty items for uh Christmas for Thanksgiving. Christmas. But anyway, let me close this video out. Uh I hope you like this video. If you did, please share, please comment, please subscribe. Please follow my other social media accounts, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch TV, Pinterest, and OldSchoolSoulFood.com. Remember the hashtag 2021, help somebody, Old School Soul Food. Until next time, have a blessed Old School Soul Food day, and I'll see y'all in the next video. And y'all have a happy, blessed Thanksgiving. And if you're sitting and riding along for the ride, I got a lot of more videos to come out before Thanksgiving. I got about six or seven more. We're going to hit you with these side items and these vegetable items and a lot of more desserts. So uh, it's just now getting started. Put the seatbelt on. Enjoy the ride because I'm loving, 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 loving what I'm doing. This is what I love to do this time of year. So anyway, have a blessed old school soul food day and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Bye.